What is up, guys? Another special edition of the Coach's Corner. Myself, my guy, Coach Fred, and we got a special guest today, wide receivers coach at Appalachian State, Lawrence Dawsey. Been all over the country from Florida State, what was an NFL Rookie of the Year, has coached Heisman winners, national championship teams. Coach, I appreciate you coming on the Coach's Corner. Glad to be with you guys, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, LD. Thank you, appreciate you, man. And you know, for people who don't know your your journey, talk about some talk about your journey from being an NFL player and getting into coaching. What was that process like? And did you always know you wanted to go into coaching after your playing career ended? No, I, I didn't. Um, I was um, in Tampa, Florida, after I finished playing with the Bucks, the crib. And um, a guy named David Lewis, a former Buccaneer, was coaching at this high school at uh, Tampa Catholic. You know, he asked me uh, would I be interested in coming over and, and helping the uh, the team out. And um, I went over and, and uh, started helping them out. And I said, man, I kind of like this. This ain't really a work. This is something I can do that I know. It, it ain't really a job. It's just having fun and teaching kids how to reach their goals and so that's how I kind of got started in, in high school in Tampa and then from there um I was fortunate Jimbo Fisher got me in the coaching he um got me to be a GA for him at LSU when he was with uh Nick Saban as the offensive coordinator and, and, and that's when my that's how my journey kind of got going from there and it, your your big break came, you know, you, you mentioned the time at LSU. You coached at South Florida for a little bit, but the Florida State tenure was your longest thus far. You guys win a national championship, have a Heisman winning quarterback, first round draft picks at wide receiver. What was that experience like? And what made looking back as an Auburn alum, still don't forgive you for beating my guys, <laughs> especially on that last minute touchdown. But um, what, what made that team so special for you? Um. It was the guys that was the players, you know. They kind of came. The practices were so hard and so competitive. Them, them team, that team, especially that championship team, it was uh, it was easy when we got to the game, you know. And when you go back and look at it, a lot of times, James Winston won the Highland Trophy, but he didn't really play a lot in the second half because we had destroyed his team so bad in the first half that he uh, he didn't get a chance to really put numbers up even more if he'd had to play a whole game. But the, just the competitiveness of them guys and they work at it. That's what really set that team apart, especially that's the championship team. And, and they was good guys, you know, but they were good guys and they loved each other and it was unity. They they was brothers. They on and off the field. And, and you you spent a lot of your career uh, c- coaching with Jimbo Fisher and you even were an offensive – you coached at A&M with them too – what made you make the move from Texas A&M to Appalachian State, and what made Appalachian State the place for you to continue your coaching career? Um, when I was with Jimbo at Texas A&M, I was an analyst. I didn't go with him originally. I kind of wanted to kind of try to get in the NFL and coaching, and that didn't work out. And so that's when I called Jimbo up and said, hey, I want to get back into it. And he didn't have nothing on the field at the time, but he, he brought me in as an analyst, and I was off the field. So the opportunity came here when Frank Ponce was the offensive coordinator here at um, – at App State, and he uh, got me to come over and get on the field and help, you know, coach the receivers over here. And um, that's down was my journey because I didn't really know Coach Clark and the other guys, but Frank Ponce, who was the OC at the time before he went to Miami, he kept calling me, kept calling me. At first, I said, nah, nah, and, but he kind of convinced me. And then I talked to my wife about it, and she said, if you want to get back on the field, hey, I'm, I'm all for it. So that's kind of um, how did my journey came to getting a – Appalachian State, and like I can say I was here for a week with him. Then he left and took the job at the University of Miami. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm working with some great guys, and um, you know, got got a great group of receivers that I'm working with, and um, I'm excited about um, having an opportunity to, to help them reach their goals on and off the field. So we got some background. I'm gonna let Coach Fred jump in here real quick before before we jump into this week's big matchup tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, LD, uh, you know, just for the people that don't know you, you know, I, I've been knowing you for a long time, man. Um, and it's funny, man, I forgot about the Tampa Catholic days, you know. Uh, Tampa Catholic yeah. had it rolling. Hey, at the crib, yeah. Tampa Catholic had it rolling. And Back it in the guys, 90s, they were rolling. Man, yeah. rolling, man, had guys like you. It was almost like, for people that don't know the background, it was almost like anybody that played for the Bucks 
that's where they went to coach. That's where they went to volunteer. So, of course, all the kids in the city wanted to figure out how to get to Tampa Catholic. I forgot all about that. Um, just kind of real quick before we get into it, LD, how, um, and, you know, and like you said, Jimbo brought you in, uh, LSU, GA. Uh, how did that relationship start with you and Jimbo? Well, it was kind of funny. Jimbo played for uh, Coach Bowden's son, Terry Bowden, when he was in right. college. And when I was playing at Florida State, Terry used to bring his staff there to watch us practice, and especially at the bowl games. And that's kind of how the relationship kind of got going just from the violent connection that he had and that I had at the time. And I didn't really know Jumbo that much. And, and then I was working with Tom Shaw, helping get yep. guys. Tom Shaw was a speed and conditioning guy to help guys get yep. ready for the combine. Yep. And so I kind of was up after I finished playing, I was up in New Orleans just before the Katrina came and messed up everything in New Orleans. He was had his business in New Orleans. So I was up there hanging out and helping him coach the receivers. I was getting ready for the draft in the combine and so Jimbo happened to come by and, and he said Jimbo Dawson looking to get into coaching y'all got anything at least he said what he was and that's kind of how it is he said I had would have had no idea he said but we would love to have he said I'm gonna go back and talk to Coach Saban and we got a spot open and he's gonna give you a call and so that's just how I got hooked up with Jimbo Fisher at LSU and ever since two that was in 2003 so ever since then me and Jimbo been been real tight and that's my guy that's my guy. Yeah, uh, I can remember coming through several times, man. You telling me stop through and, uh, you know, meeting him and, you know, anybody with Doss, he's, you know, down with us, down with me, you know, that kind of thing. So I knew the relationship was tight. Um, I was just, I never knew and I never asked how it actually started. Um, so we all exactly learned something started, new. Back in the day, back when I was playing at Florida State, that's when I originally first met him, but we never really connected all the way until I started, you know, GA for him at LSU in 2003. And, you know, ever since then, we've been tight with each other. A lot of wins, a lot of rings. Yes. Yeah, I got a ring. I actually got a ring in at LSU in 2003 with Jumbo and Nick. So I got two national championship rings. Two <laughs> one with LSU and one with Florida State. So that was, that was a, a great experience, too. Man, that's big time. And there's a lot of rumors, you know, behind the scenes about what it's like to play under Saban. We hear all the competitive uh, things. Qu quick off the side question. Did you ever get in those basketball games that have been legendary around SEC circles? Did, did you ever get to go play oh, in one man, of those? Was, oh, yeah. It was it was so fun. And one time we was playing. I was playing because I was a pretty decent basketball player. And uh, Nick Saban was on the opposite side of my, of my team. And my team happened to be winning at the time. He stopped the game and said, hey, Switch. He put me on his team and kicked me on his <laughs> other team. <laughs> Off his team. <laughs> so I kept his team win. So he's going to stack his team, you know. He did uh -huh. a great job recruit. So he's going to do whatever it takes to win. He's very competitive. So that's why he had uh -huh. that he, he find the best. He find the best talent and, and get it on his team. <laughs> I'll, that, that is amazing. But – you know, and this is and I, Coach Fred. You could even jump in here too, because because at Alcorn State, you guys have a similar challenge. Coach, you've coached in some big cities, recruiting to Tallahassee, recruiting for a brand like Texas A and M, and even South Florida is in a fairly big city down there in Florida. How different has the recruiting process been recruiting can recruiting kids to Boone, North Carolina, and Appalachian State compared to some of the bigger places that you've coached in your career? Well, one of the reasons why I came to App State because of the name brand App State. You know, it's been known to go out and beat, you know, power five programs over the years. And so the tradition of winning championships before they became to the big to, to the big Sun Belt, they, they was always winning. And so the tradition of App State kind of was another reason why I came, because I knew I would have a name brand to sell, because I had opportunities to go and coach other places that I didn't go because I didn't want to just be going and getting my head beat in. And I know coming to App State, the thing I would be able to sell is the name brand, and the, and the, you're gonna have a chance to compete and win, and, and that's what um what kind of convinced me to actually come on to App State because of the tradition of App State football program, of being winning program and, and and guys that they still put guys in the league and help them reach their goals, and, and it's a great campus and it's a, it's a great environment. That's what we do here. We uh we sell the championships. Um, you know that's kind of what is our draw. And, uh, you know, Coach McNair really pushes the fact that, you know, you're going to leave with the opportunity to win rings, but
but you're going to have your degree. Um, so he's kind of like uh, and Coach Dawson can talk about. It, he's kind of like Coach Bout in a sense. Coach Max, want, he, he wants moms and dads to come on the visit because he, he focuses on them because he knows if he can get mom, uh, he's going to get baby. <laughs> And you know, and that's the uh, the old wise tale about Coach Bow, right? That Coach Dawson. If yeah. if, if he oh, did in the house, oh, it's over. If Coach Bow got in the house, it was over. You know, he did a great job of closing. You know, he did a great Coach Bow was one of the guys that uh, I'm, I'm always look up to, and that's why I try to kind of challenge myself to be in that same mold of guy that be disciplined and stern, doing it the right way. He was a guy that always the dim way, but when I played for Coach Bowden. As a player, I was respectful. When I came back and worked with him as a coach, he was that same man. So it gave me even more respect for Coach Bowden. He didn't waver. He didn't deviate from anything that he was doing when I played for him and when I came back to coach for him. You know, I have so much respect for what, for what he did for me as a player and as my boss, as a, as a coach. Absolutely. And App State this season, it, it's been – it has been a season for the for the books thus far, from the A and M upset to game day coming around for the first time. It, it, it's it's been a wild season in Boone, but you guys have a lot of talent. Bryce at the quarterback spot has been playing electric football, and I've said for two years now since that bowl game performance, even before you were there, Cameron Peoples does not get enough respect for how good he is at the <laughs> running back spot. That he is electric, but coach, looking back. How big was the win over Texas A&M and Kyle Field for you guys in that program? Oh, it was it was a tremendous win. You know, going to a place like that, and then guys that haven't seen any the guys on this team hadn't seen it. I kept trying to tell them the whole you know all week what to expect when we got there. And when they, we got there, and then they seen it, they were like, "Coach, you won line. This is huge. <laughs> this is huge." But I, I but I told our guys though, hey. They put on their pants one leg at a time like we do. We just got to go out and play ball and don't get caught up in everything else. Just play the guys that's in between the white lines. If we do that, we're going to be all right. And I, with the running backs that we had on this on this team, this, run, this running back room probably is one of the better run, right, running backs complete with all the guys in there besides just people. We got great running backs in that room that we're ready to run the football. And that's the key to the program. This is what the program been known for, running the football. And, and and Coach Fred says all the time, and, and there's been a few games we've covered this year where at Tennessee last week, we also had Kansas the week before where he was talking about how hard it was to keep a team focused when all the lights and all the cameras come to the town for one of the first times. What was that week like for you guys preparing for Troy, game day coming in? You guys are probably the hottest team in the media circuit that week. How hard was that for you guys as a coaching staff to keep the team focused on the on, on the um on the task at hand? Uh, Coach Clark did a great job of just keeping the guys down, trying to keep telling them don't get caught up with let the students and everybody else enjoy that. We got a task at hand to be able to come to work every day. Even though you tell them all that, you still – with all the new social media and everything that go on, now, it's still hard to keep them away from it. But we just kept trying to tell them, hey, man, everybody coming at us now. We got a target on our back. We can't let up. We got to stay focused. Take one game at a time. And basically, bang, one play at a time. Everything you do, one at a time. Don't get caught up with it, looking down the road and get all that other stuff and get distracted. Because people, they're going to love you when you do what you did. And then when you stink it up, then they're going to hate you. So just got to, <laughs> got to stay even keel. This business, and I've been through both sides of it. And before I let Coach Fred kick off the preview for that this Georgia State matchup, that Hail Mary, you're the wide receivers coach. Did you guys practice that, or were you just proud of your guys that they went out there and made a play? No, we we we, we practice that every week. That's something we we do on on uh, Fridays with um end of the games type situation. You prepare for the situation. You never really knowing when it's going to come into play and when it actually going, going to work. But that's something that we um, work on every week of uh, all the different scenarios because you just never know. Um, that ain't the only one that we work, but that just happened to be the one at that time that <laughs> we get worked. And we were very thankful that it worked. <laughs> we did it. That was, but just, like I said, that was my probably my, my second time experiencing one of them type uh, of plays of a Hail Mary and, and it's working like that. And, and they're not, and of course, winning the game. That was the first time that I experienced that. Man, as we get into this matchup for tomorrow night, 
Um, you know, as you were just hitting on the highs and the lows of the season, um, you know, you have the big win, Texas A&M, you get the big win at the end with Troy, then you have that letdown with James Madison. Um, and now, you know, you guys are in a situation kind of not do or die, but to keep pace, to keep yourself right there for the conference. Um, coming into this game, man, the matchup, and I, and I guess the key for them would be to slow you guys down uh, offensively and try and eat the clock up. What, I guess, would be the focus for you guys to get out fast um, at home against a team that they're, they're desperate. I mean, they need a win in the conference as well. Um, so what, 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 what's the keys for you guys to get out fast and make sure, you know, you get that done, uh, to, you know, to get to give you guys an opportunity to close out the game? We got to run the football. We got to be able to run the football and we got to be able to stop the run. At the end of the day, them the two things, whoever can win the line of scrimmage, that's who's going to have success in the game. We got to win the line of scrimmage. So if we can run the football and stop they run, I like our chances, but we we definitely know both teams is, it need to win. Actually, that's Sean, the, the head coach of uh, Georgia State played him with Coach Clark at Appalachian State. So it's a rivalry just between them two guys. So I know they're going to have fun with it by going against each other. But he the guys that can win up. Yeah, so you know he's going to be he gonna be coming back home trying to knock off his alma mater, and we're going to be trying to get back on track. And we in a desperate situation. Both teams are in a desperate situation. So it should be a good football game. So I'm anxious to see how we respond. Had a good week of practice. The guys been working hard and knowing what we got to do. We got to just go 1-0 and tomorrow and don't worry about nothing else but what's going on tomorrow when we play Georgia State. Now, before B take over now, me and you both, I mean, we play receiver, we coach receivers. And I, and I know you say you got to run the ball. But you got a dude that's doing some 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 things, man, uh, Mr. Horn. Um, and, and, and not just him, Mr. Davis as well. Uh, you got two guys that can really take over ball game as well. Uh, and I know you got to run the ball. I know this, but <laughs> we got to get the ball to horn as well. Um, uh, and well, as the guy that's the, heading that the, room, the, I know you that. At the end of the day, for I always tell my guys that receiver, I don't care if we're running the football, we're part of running the football too. But definitely for, for us to win, that room got to make the team win. If we don't go in. In that receiver room, we ain't gonna win the game. So they already feel the pressure from me about doing the the, the attention to detail, little things. We're gonna be fine at that part, but still, at the end of the day, running the football and control the line of scrimmage has got to be our DNA. We want to be a physical team, and so if we don't want to toss it around. We want to come out pounding, letting them know it's gonna be a physical game, and then we can throw the ball. We can set up the passing game off the run game. That's what, that's what we're looking at doing. Okay, okay, I got you. I got you. You got me. You got me. Got My you. boys gonna get <laughs> their point, but I'm looking, and we're also looking at the weather type situation we're gonna possibly be in tomorrow with wind. Could be windy and all that too. So, running the ball is the key. Is what we're emphasizing for this game. We got to run the football. Gotcha. I'm with you. And, and, with and Coach Frey, <laughs> oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying that at the end of the day. We know receivers are the playmakers, and they're going to get it done when their time comes. But in my mindset, I'm telling them we got to run the football. And that, and that can be giving us the football to run into. We ain't got to catch it all the time. They can hand it off to us, too. Most definitely. <laughs> so you guys had a bye week last week, but you, you, got, you guys were, were on a two-game losing streak in conference with the James Madison Texas State laws. What were some things that you and the coaching staff wanted the team to focus on in the bye week going into this Georgia State matchup that you said, we got to do this, this, and this, and we got to get back on the right track if we do these things? We had to go back and technique and fundamentally sound. We got to go out and tackle, and we got to go out and block and take care of football. Turnovers. And missed tackles is what cost us in them two conference games that we played. Turnovers and missed tackles. So we go out and go do the basic things of your fundamentals and technique on that. We'll win. We'll win. And so we went back and did that. Started over, taking care of the football on the offensive side of the ball and tackling on the defensive side of the ball. That's what the things that we worked on in our bye week. And, it, and I guess both of you guys can speak on these next two questions. But the first one is you guys – 
it like you guys had a bye week last week, so I guess it's technically not a short week. But in in, in usual with the Sun Belt, you guys do have Wednesday Thursday night games sometimes. How hard is it for you guys to prepare, and how does the schedule shift for a coaching staff when you have a game that kicks off on a on a night other than Saturday? Uh, it's, it's, it's a little different in how you do things. You really don't get the weekend off. We actually had we practice over the weekend. Normally, when you got a bye week. You take the weekend off, let the players relax and watch football all day on Saturday and Sunday. But what we did, we had to come in and practice because of a, the weekend game. But after the game on Wednesday, the players will be able to get rest this weekend that they didn't get this past weekend. But you kind of just have to plan the days, like, like starting on that Sunday being like a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then like the day is like really a Friday for us, even though we can make it seem like we know I'm playing on Saturday, but we treat it today like it's a Friday the night before the game on the Saturday game. Just have to back the schedule up and get them in that fine step. But it's it's not an easy thing to do, especially with your kids having to focus on class during you know during the week of a game and all that. So it's it's a challenge for the guys. But we needed we needed the bye week to give us a chance to heal up a little bit and give us a chance to go back and get the basic fundamental technique that we was able to get to get taught last last week when we did practice. And now the guys are anxious to go out and play tomorrow night. Good deal, good deal. I know for us, uh, we don't – Wednesday night would be completely weird, you know, but we have a, we have a Friday Friday game coming up in a couple weeks, um, and our schedule will be shifted as well, uh, especially for us, which is a little different from Coach Dawson. We'll be traveling for our Friday mm-hmm. game, so um, wow. we'll so definitely yeah, – yeah. yeah, we got to speed yeah, that week good. up. Um, travel day, the whole nine, to play on Friday. So, uh, you know, you do different things, but I, I – I don't know how y'all pulled it off for a Wednesday. I wouldn't even know where to start for a Wednesday game. Uh, <laughs> well, they but got, you know, this is my first one. This, I'm sorry. This is my first Wednesday night game, too, so it's all new to me, so how they um, did that. But Coach them been doing it for so while, such a long time, so it was an easy transition for them to just pull out the schedule that they've been doing in the past for the Wednesday night game. So it's, I'll, I'll get them notes from you on how that works. <laughs> gotcha. We'll give them. And – uh, and, and, and you know, to 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 kind of wrap this up, um, uh, it's the kind of a two part question. One, a lot of people who haven't played football focus on man when, when they think of wide receiver coaching. Wide receivers are like, man, it's the big plays, making plays downfield, route running, catching. But you mentioned something very interesting about getting your guys together, even on run plays. You have to be ready, and you got to be involved in the yes. play because one missed block on the edge could could cost to play, you know, its full potential. So how do you keep your wide receivers mentally focused and make them understand, listen, just because we're not throwing you the ball does not mean that you're not important. How do, how do you build that culture in the wide receiving room that, listen, we need you to go out there and block too and give it and give it your all, just like if you were running a, a, an important route in a play? I tell them it's a mindset. You know, I don't want no receiver to plan for me that ain't going to go out and help the team win. I tell them if – we get in the if the running back get to the secondary, it's our job to escort him to the end zone. Don't let your man make the play. When your man make the play, that's a problem. That's a problem. So you try to stay between your man and the ball carrier, and we fine. And, but it's all to me though. It come down to a mindset. You know, this is an attitude. You you can't go out and be a prima donna in my mind about just wanting to catch football. You got to go out and help your team. And if the other receiver catch it, you need to be running the block for him. You, you know, you can't just be somebody watching the game. If you want to do that, you need to come sit with me or stand with me on the sideline. So we, we want to be involved in every play. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I learned a lot about that. that. You know, that's how I go about it, Fred. You go over how you handle that part in the ring. No, I mean, I, I, I basically getting into the game, um, the coaching game a long, long time ago was was through you, under you. Um, and that was one of the main things, and, and I see it's still one of your main things that we talked about. Um, you know, you can't expect to be out there if you're not going to be a complete football player. Um, and that's just one of the things that I've taken from you that I continue to hammer uh, with my guys. You know, if you're not going to block, you're not going to play. Um, that's from the bubbles, you know, taking care of uh, our guys to uh, yep. you never know when, when, um, when that running back's going to break out of there. It, it can make the yeah. difference between a 15 yarder and an 80 yarder. Um, yeah, and I don't want to be sitting in that coaching room when we had a chance <laughs> to make a block to get that guy sprung for a game winner and we stand and watch and him. We play. don't do it. 
yeah, we don't want that. We don't want that. So, uh, we don't you know, I, I kind of got that from you, and that's the mindset that I've always taken with my guys is we're going to block. You know, if we don't yeah. block, if we don't feel like we need to block, then we don't we don't play receiver for Coach Fred. No, yeah, you don't get to play. I, you don't get to I'll, play. I'll, I love the mindset from both of you. But final question, Coach, is before we let you get get out of here, get some sleep for before the big game tomorrow. You guys have four receivers with 200-plus yards receiving, a tight end with four touchdowns over 150 through the air, too. How, speak to getting that wide receiving room ready and how, you, and how you have so many guys who are ready at any given moment to make an impact week in and week out. Well, I, I play – I tell the guys going into it, I plan to – play guys i'm not gonna let just three guys play the whole i'll rotate guys in because i want them to be ready because you never know when somebody gonna go down and they the other guys ain't got experience so i try to get guys in the game and get them involved and let them know and be ready to go i don't treat them like the ones want to start i don't treat them just that start i treat all of them that they started when they get in the game you're responsible to doing what you're supposed to do and if you don't you ain't gonna play so I kind of make sure that they know what's going on, and I also give them reps and practice, equal reps to make sure that they know what's going on and they prepare with the starting quarterback as well. So they don't do the timing part of it. But the main thing is to practice it and let them know what's going on. And knowing they ain't going to get many opportunities, you better take advantage of the ones you get. Because if you don't, the next man going to step in and get them. And- I, I love it, Coach. Well, Coach, good luck tomorrow. A huge game tomorrow night, Georgia Southern, 6, 6 p.m. Central Time. Kickoff. Georgia, huge, Georgia State. Georgia State. Yeah, Georgia, yeah, Georgia State. My bad. Yeah. Six, six, six o'clock kickoff. Our, me, me and Coach Fred Tom. It's a huge Sun Belt matchup. But, Coach, um, real quick, let people know where they can find you um, on, on social media and uh, and just let them know if there's anything you want to plug, anything, any messages you want to give before the show ends, man. This time's yours. Looking for playmakers, you know. You can you can hit me on Twitter at Lawrence Dawson. That's all you got to just look up Lawrence Dawson, at, and that's how you can get in touch with me. But I'm looking for playmakers out there, you know. And coaches, if you got guys, send them to me, and we will we'll definitely check them out. I know uh, we won't be able to sign with so many, but I still like looking at them. And anyway, I can help you with you guys. You know, just let me know. Oh, uh, you you sent me some of my best, so I mean, I know how that go. I know how all that right, go. My brother. <laughs> All right, well, y'all have a y'all have a blessed night, man. Y'all take care. You too, you too man. man. Appreciate you, brother. All right.